Calibration of a boom sprayer. To ensure crop protection, products are applied at recommended dose rates per hectare. Accurate calibration and correct use of spraying equipment is essential. This short movie will demonstrate how a mechanized field sprayer can be calibrated before being used in the field. Before beginning work, a number of items will be needed. A measuring tape with a length of 100 meters. Some tall sticks or canes to use as distance markers several measuring jugs, one for each nozzle on the spray boom, a notebook and pencil, a stopwatch or other means of accurate timing, a small stiff brush for cleaning nozzles, a calculator, a short two meter measuring tape for measuring boom height, a selection of handy tools. Preparation. The first task is to check over the sprayer. Make sure it is clean and in good working order, with no leaks. In particular, the nozzles should be examined to ensure they are all of the same type and size. For overall application, 110 degree flat fan nozzles should be fitted and the distance between the nozzles on the boom should be 50 centimeters. The distance to the top edge of the target area should be 50 centimeters to guarantee even distribution. The next task is to fill the sprayer up to about half full with clean water. Once this is done, the PTO driven pump should be started with the tractor throttle set to 540 RPM. The valve directing the water supply to the boom should then be opened to fill the pipework and begin spraying. The nozzles and filters should be removed and cleaned. The nozzle output should then be carefully observed in order to check for nozzles producing distorted patterns, which might indicate that they are worn or partially blocked. Any worn or damaged nozzles should be replaced. After replacing, each nozzle should be aligned about 5 to 10 degrees to the line of the boom to avoid the spray output from each individual jet colliding. If bayonet caps are fitted, this is easy because with this type, the offset is adjusted automatically. The pipework should also be inspected for leaks, the operation of the valves verified and also the operation of any in-tank agitation. For flat fan nozzles, the pressure gauge mounted by the pump should be initially set at between 1.5 to 3 bars of pressure. Always set the pressure of your nozzle with regard to the recommendation of the nozzle manufacturer. See nozzle table. The label of the product or products to be applied to the crop should first be consulted and an appropriate spray volume selected. Crop height and density play a part because taller crops or more dense crops tend to require a higher water volume. Environmental conditions also play a part. More wind indicating a risk of drift may require a use of low drift nozzles. Final choice of nozzles will depend on all of these conditions. Measuring tractor speed. To measure the sprayer output in liters per hectare, first we need to know our speed of travel. To measure the speed of the tractor, first it is necessary to use a long tape measure and mark sticks to mark out a test strip of exactly 100 meters on a reasonably flat piece of ground. The tractor put in the correct gear for a suitable speed for spraying, about 6 to 10 kph. Engage the PTO pump at 540 RPM and set off towards the marked strip, ensuring that the desired constant speed is reached before reaching the start marker. Carefully note the time to travel along the marked 100 meters using a stopwatch or other time device. The tractor speed can then be calculated using the following formula. Speed, kilometers an hour, equals 3.6 times distance driven in meters over time in seconds. Measuring the flow rate. Next, we must measure the flow rate of the nozzles. 
The most precise method is to measure the output of the nozzles within one minute. The tractor pump should be engaged using the same RPM settings used in the tractor speed measurement. The boom valve should be opened and the spray from each nozzle should be collected in a series of jugs or measuring cylinders over a period of exactly one minute. For this job, the jets must be well inside the jugs so no spray escapes. The water output from each individual nozzle should be carefully measured. The average nozzle output should be calculated and recorded as litres per minute. Output should be very similar from each nozzle. If it is not, replace any nozzle giving an output differing more than plus or minus 5% from the overall average because it is probably damaged or worn. Spray volume calculation. Having measured the tractor speed in kilometres per hour and the average nozzle output in litres per minute, we now have the basis for our calculation of spray volume in litres per hectare. Application rate, litres per hectare equals flow rate single nozzle litres per minute times 60,000 over nozzle distance in centimetres times by the application speed in kilometres an hour. An application rate of 200 litres per hectare is typical for herbicide or insecticide application. Fungicides generally need a higher water volume of 250 to 300 litres per hectare. If the resulting figure is close to that desired, which can be checked from the nozzle tables provided by the manufacturer, then only modest final adjustment will be required. In this example, the operator is using nozzles of the type T-Jet 11003. Tuning the spray volume. Large adjustments. Having measured the output of the sprayer, if a large adjustment is required, then it is likely that inappropriate nozzles were fitted. These will need to be changed. It is possible to use the measured speed and desired spray volume in litres per hectare to calculate the required flow rate per nozzle. With this information, it is possible to use the jet manufacturer's tables to look up the required jet code and required pump pressure to gain the necessary flow rate. Flow rate single nozzle, litres per minute, equals speed, kilometres per hour, times nozzle distance in centimetres, times application rate, litres per hectare, over 60,000. The calculation is made by multiplying the measured speed in kilometres per hour by the boom width in metres and by the desired spray volume in litres per hectare. Then, dividing this by a fixed conversion factor of 60,000, multiplied by the number of nozzles on the boom. The result is the flow rate per jet required in litres per minute. Moderate adjustments. If only a moderate adjustment is required, the most common method is to adjust the tractor speed. Speeding up reduces the spray volume in litres per hectare, slowing down increases it. The required new speed is simply calculated by dividing the measured spray volume by the required spray volume and then multiplying the result by the measured tractor speed in kilometres per hour. The figure calculated is the new tractor speed required. Small adjustments. It is possible to slightly change the pressure of the spray, but care must be taken to remain within the optimal pressure range of the nozzles as indicated in the manufacturer's literature. Remember, changes in pressure can affect droplet size, and too fine spray can mean drift, too coarse spray can mean runoff. A similar calculation can be made to determine the desired pressure. The required spray volume is divided by the measured spray volume and the resulting figure multiplied by the current pressure. The figure calculated is the new pressure required. After adjustments have been made, it makes sense to repeat the calibration to ensure that the adjustments have worked. If drift is likely to be a problem due to windy conditions, then it is advisable to fit drift reducing nozzles. In our example, a suitable example of an equivalent drift reducing nozzle is an Airmix 11003. Final equipment adjustments to suit the crop. Before spraying, a visual check of the boom should be made to ensure that it is horizontal. If it is not, the application will not be even. 
It is also important to adjust the boom to the correct height for spraying, either the soil or the growing crop. While flat fan nozzles, typically used for spraying herbicides, but sometimes also for fungicide and insecticides, 110 degree nozzles are normally recommended. These require that the boom height should be around 45 to 50 centimetres above the target, at 50 centimetre spacing between the nozzles. Now you are ready to prepare the spray mix. Don't forget to take the correct precautions when handling crop protection products, especially to ensure that you wear appropriate personal protective equipment and before you do anything, read the label.